Playing against better teams is the fastest way to improve. It's definitely also a humbling experience for them, and they're gonna be like, we got to Worlds. It's a big accomplishment already. I think their weak link is the mid laner. If we play at the top of our game, we can beat TSM. Welcome back to the Season 3 World Championship. I'm Riv, aka Rivington Biz in the third, and bellying out to the broadcast desk with me for the last two games of this stage group, group stage is Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler. And I am, are you ready to get to it? I'm ready. I'm ready. Absolutely. So let's get to it. Our 10th match of the day, North America's Team Solo Mid versus Lithuania's Gaming Gear EU. Both of these teams, once, both uh, for both of these teams, once this match ends, so does their time here at Worlds. After failing to beat a Korean team for the third year in a row, Reggie and his team are heading home early from the World Championship once again here. Team Solo Mid has gone out of their way to thank their fans for their support, but nothing would thank them more than a win in their last game of Absolutely. Season 3. And for Gaming Gear, this is their last chance to grab a win at Worlds. So even though this match doesn't really matter as far as the tournament goes, it means a whole lot to both of these teams. All right, let's get right to it. Let's check out the starting lineups on the blue side. It's Team Solo mid. Dyrus in the top lane. Otto in the jungle. Reginald already communicating with the team in mid. Wild Turtle on AD. It's special at support. And on the red side, it's Team Gaming Gear EU. Up top is NBS. In the jungle is Alanir. Mazarin is mid. Deadly Brothers, the AD carry. And in Spyro, the dragon is the support. And you can tell that both of these teams are still, we've, it's kind of been a whole motto of the day. Just good feelings, smiles on faces. Dyrus was on social media just now, and he said, if I have five wards, I can't die level one. Oh. So we'll see what he can do for himself. He, they're obviously coming in here. With the smile on their faces, good-minded. So we'll see what these Dyrus guys bring for each other. Dyrus has been giving up a he, lot of first bloods, but, but he's been getting camped. So targeted. There has been a target on his back the entire time. We see it game after game. Usually, he'll when, when, when he was playing Jace in the NALCS, he'd be like, well, I could just throw the hammer down and just carry on Jace. But now that <laughs> you know, a lot of champions are seeing that Jace isn't the one in the 311 patch, it's affected a few of those picks. And everybody's kind of had to fend for themselves with this tournament being a very mid-oriented tournament for those players. And the ADs with Triforce. And a lot of these guys um, starting to let off steam. Yep. It's the end of the group stages. Absolutely. We've seen it already. Just warning people that are tuning in now. The champions that are going to be selected here <laughs> are going to have a, a bit more variance than usual. Just a tad. We, we've been, I believe, within the past few days with that, with everybody kind of testing their own waters, seeing what's good for them. Mm -hmm. We've gone past that 50 mark used. We're like 60-some champions now that have been using the tournament because of that little spice up that the teams have been doing. But we do see the Aatrox out. Uh -huh. Interesting that we saw Korea bring that out now. They said, well, we played it in A. We started to like it a lot. I do also want to point out that you know, OMG just won with a lot of these champions that yep. people do not really see. Undefeated. And they, as soon as they saw the champions locked in, they immediately discounted this team, yet they performed spectacularly with those champions. So I think it, you know, my favorite thing that they kept kind of reiterating to is how do you adjust to something that isn't a pattern, something you haven't seen before. And you can't. You have to be reactive the entire time. And when you're on your toes like that, it almost puts you on your heels, if you will, because you're never the first one making the move. China going with that composition instead of uh, you know pulling out another strategy actually means that they're being more competitive now yep. because they're trying to hide everything possible from all the teams that they're going to face later in this tournament. So with that, let's take a look at this game that we're in. All the bands already done. And TSM on blue side here. First pick versus ban. That went to an Aatrox, Elise, and Zyra as they are all out. And they may be looking for that Thresh special. The all-star, one of the all-stars of the team. And that's what he used up there. Oh yeah, all-star Thresh play. I remember back to the North American LCS where he interrupted St. Vicious on six consecutive Jarvan flag combos Each with one his play. was just as amazing as the last. And then St. stopped ganking that lane. <laughs> he learned his lesson. <laughs> Didn't want to go him a back. while. Somebody we've been seeing banned out quite a bit now through is Corky. Mm -hmm. He has always really seen the purple side ban. If you're on blue, you're gonna try to force something out to get yourself going. but. On the purple side, looks like he does get through for a second pick on GG's one and two here. It really has been the rise of the Trinity Force carries here so far at Worlds. Corky's pretty much the front runner among all those um, AD carries as well. Safe picks here coming in for Alunir. Takes his Jarvan up so he can be a menace around the jungle. If you can hit all, hit all those lanes with Jarvan in the first few levels, then you can put fear in your opponent's eyes and really make an impact in every lane gank after that because they know you're looking for blood. 
So that's what we're gonna be looking to doing. He's here. a strong jungler at coming in and ganking lanes yep. just for harass oh! as well. All right, we warned you. Yep, there it is. That gets a bit of a standing ovation from the Teemo lovers, but we cannot lie. Any Teemo lover is also a Teemo hater. So it's a yeah. love-hate relationship. You know, I think Reggie might I think Reggie might hold on to this champion pick because Reggie's gotten a lot of uh, you know bad press. Yep. And this is really getting him back in, as you can already hear, with a lot of the fans. I think he's gonna hold on to that Teemo. They're probably gonna do uh, some switches here. There is an Oriana. We gotta remember that got locked in with the Teemo. So how much more is that of a mind game? Meanwhile, on Gaming Gear, <laughs> we've got a composition that they've used over and over again, yes. all the way since Gamescom. Uh, nothing new here. Jarvan, uh, definitely one of Alanir's favorite junglers, likes to get going early. Mazarin Gragas plays. We can't talk him up enough because he pulls the Baron steals. They are going to be red side. Yep, red side. Oh, man. <laughs> Alrighty, somebody's going to be annoyed by blinding darts. We know this is on the plate for this game upcoming. We see Hackerum now jumping into the tournament for the first time here, so we're going to get a little horseplay from the odd one. But it's where the Oriana goes. It looks like it will be that Vlad, the AD carry turtle here on a little bit of Teemo. So they have uh, two more seconds there. Now they can't switch. This is actually going well, to be... Have to pick. Oh, just kidding. You're ahead. You Ooh, just want to get, get into the game. I want to be <laughs> done with this day. <laughs> All right, Trindamir. let's get going. We got one more pick here for GG. Trindamir is a good lock-in for them because, uh, you know, at, back at Gamescom, they had good success with the split-pushing Trindamir. And if they can get him a static shiv, Boom. then he can actually hold on to a lane with Vladimir. Not many people can actually do that. Lock it and rock it. These are your compositions coming in here. All right. The 10th game of the day because we had that extra one. So this, or ninth, ninth, so that yeah. Ninth, ninth, <laughs> tenth? You guys Eleven. are here with us. <laughs> you know what it is. Turn it up one more notch. We're going for this one. 36 seconds left in the pick ban phase. The teams have All what right. they want right now. Hecarim and Timo making an appearance here. As well as Once Trindamir. we get down to that 20 second mark. No more switching. There's no going back. So Dyrus and Expecial are playing with fire right now. Boom. So right. it's, it's actually after 20 seconds, Yep. not with 20 seconds. So they're so, already there. Yep, I have, a, I have a pretty good story here, backing this one up. Before this game, actually, after the last one, Dyrus and Expecial played. They said, 1v1 me, bro. Expecial and Dyrus went eight times in the top lane. Expecial won seven of those. So Ooh. he actually earned the right to lane top. And he said he was going to show Dyrus how you get through the first five minutes without dying. Oh my God. <laughs> So, big talk from Expecial here. We'll see if he can actually pull it off. Sometimes you just have to have your teammates hear the right thing, and you'll motivate them in the right direction. Showing is a good way to teach. <laughs> teams are about ready to head onto the rift. Before they do, let's see how the fans voted on this one. The current count on LOLesports.com is 92% for Team Solo Mid. The analysts said Team Solo Mid, but they don't count in that 92%. All those people voted. They are now, you know, fans of Teemo. They can't, they can't, go, they can't renege on that. That's... They're locked in. They're Teemo fans. That's something you might regret at some point in time, but right now they're feeling pretty good about it. These teams are ready, and these teams are on to the Rift. TSM versus Gaming Gear EU. As we hop on, Riv and Kobe bringing it to you live here. Everybody in the crowd, pats and backs. Everybody watching at home, thank you for sticking with us all day long. Worlds isn't even over. We're just starting. So Space Teemo started out with a red elixir as well. Reggie's looking to get this party started very early. AD, wait. All right. AD Oriana. Yes, I like it. I've actually seen it before. Didn't work too well, but I've seen it. So there's also, you know, TSM's a very old team. There's some good history here. Wild Turtle actually has played mid professionally. Yes. He subbed at Leaf IPL. Turtle. He subbed at IPL as a mid laner. This is a legitimate role swap. We'll, we'll chalk that one up he as a He is one. hatching that ward right now, so they are going to walk right off of that. MBS safe in the try. Team Solo mid going on a Mission Impossible here. That wasn't that impossible. Mission success. Success. Both, All right. Both teams reading each other perfectly. These are open books right now, but I don't think they're going to get to the next chapter just yet. They make their way out to the other side of the river. Good rule of thumb. Don't cross the river alone. Ooh. That's what they're putting into use here. Reggie's crossing the river alone. Oh, man. He's scouting ahead. Oh, dear. 
He's on duty. And oh, he's going to be on duty. Okay, he said some, good, lane. some traps here. Sometimes when you set a trap by yourself, you catch way more than you can actually deal <laughs> with. Uh, he's actually got no backup right now. We'll have to see how Darius support skills can actually come in here because just Reggie being behind a minion wave and running into a Corky Sona, he would actually die in that matchup. So you are correct. We are going to get Reginald on the AD carry position. Wild Turtle moves himself back to the mid lane here. We'll see how this works for him. Dyrus. Okay. Dyrus Delaying the support. minion wave. I like this. Delaying the minion wave so that the, the, the waves are actually pushed up a little bit. They have to know, though. They're like, wait. Reggie's just getting himself into a whole they heap don't. of trouble here. This oh! Is, it's, it's a whole... How didn't he feel him? Oh, man. He's, he's not that furry, I guess. He's covered in the spacesuit. Right space suit. on top of him. He's got to be running out of oxygen. He's going to come out soon. Oh, the flash, oh, flash, the flash, flash play, but they go for Sona. Some of the lowest HP in the beginning of the game. Oh, Reggie gets oh, first blood for Reginald, but he goes down valiantly. <laughs> All right. Reggie gets the badge for sneak attack. Right he's, out the gate. He's earned it. That is going to give level er, early level two here to Deadly Brother, though. And it's going to be up to actually Dyrus on Thresh to, to carry this lane, it seems. Timo doing what Timo does, already causing Inspiro to pull some of his hair out on that one, but he'll get back to lane. This should be all right onto this, and it looks like now the focus on the Wild Turtle in mid. Alunir creeping up slowly from the left side here. Wild Turtles is doing a good job. He's gonna gonna want to hug that bottom side of the river because that's where his ward is. Oriana's got her built-in speed burst. Boom. And he's able to walk away. Nice little play there by Alunir. He could definitely put some damage on, but I like his play without the vision on the odd one. He said that might be a bad idea. I may tunnel in. He makes his way back to his own jungle and sees that pressure can be applied in the bottom lane. But where did Reggie right. go again? Master Captain Reggie comes back for Deadly Brother. Oh, that's too many minions. Too many minions. Yeah, that's a bit of a trade in the favor of GG. He did get some damage on a Deadly Brother, though. But the sustain, surprise, they're not able to get this back up yet. Finally, a level two coming in from Inspiro as the odd one starts to wreak havoc on the jungle here. They trade Wraith Camps, yep. and that is actually going to be Alanir heading towards the bottom. This is a Red Elixir Teemo, though. This is not your ordinary Teemo. So now this is the 3v2 dive. They're increasing it and taking it to the next level every game. They say 3v1, we just want more kills. We'll put two people in that. They're thinking about it. Looks like they are going to disregard. Nobody wants to dive Dyrus for it. <laughs> That's scary. Special, by they, the way. They've done it all tournament. Special is one minute away from proving himself to Dyrus, saying it's not that hard. Oh! Oh, the dodge back and forth! The quick feet coming out from Wild Turtle. Puts on the shell a bit more defense for himself. The party oh, goes down. Dear. Is the ignite there? Turtle goes down. He can't dance it out. The odd one will not be able to finish. They get out with a 300 combined HP. Yeah, go back to the bottom lane, Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing what he can. They're putting All right, hard well, pressure We got to give him another chance. We got to give him another As chance. As a jungler, though, you got to say that was a good game. They came in strong. They gave him health. They weren't able to really come back on that one. And also, this is the odd one now being an extension of Reginald, or of, of Turtle. This is different. He's it, usually it that does, right you're hand right, of you're Reginald. So that's different play they're having in the mid lane. There. It does take a while to build that synergy. The jungle mid synergy. Yep. Wild Turtle and the odd one having some problems there. Let's look at this top lane. MBS versus Expecial. A little Vladimir here, as Kobe was saying. The Expecial versus Dyrus lane matchups 1v1 as they were having fun. Went to Expecial, so we'll see if I can hold his own in this top lane. He is at 24 CS to the 37. But at the turret, Vlad's not the worst last hitter, so he should be okay for himself. Two to one now. We're five and a half minutes in with that first blood coming fast from Reggie in the bottom lane. And TSM still is applying that aggression. Also, you know, Expecial is actually no stranger to AP carries. Before he joined Solo Mid, he was a solo mid player himself. He would always go towards the mid lane, and uh, he was only forced onto support because, you know, Reggie takes precedence. Special looking to do some damage here. Oh, uh, no, try to get the Tides of Blood on, but he couldn't grab it. Looking around, that's great. Thanks, Mazarin. 34 to 30 CS. Well, actually, it's 34 to, where are you, Turtle? 29. So that's not too bad in the mid lane. Uh, yeah, Everybody rearranged kind of those. Hard hats on right now. It is. They are kind of mixed up since they switched up lanes. So to add the CS together will be a little different. As we look at the beers, the beers 
the tears in Mazarin's the inventory. Got beers for you. Mazarin has the beers. He's burping himself away. But the tear in the inventory for Wild Turtle means he's going for that late game Ori. And tear's not really something you see on Ori unless it's been lately. NALCS as well as around the world. Yeah, it's interesting. He did not go with the chalice for the built-in magic resist. Mm -hmm. Rather just go straight tier. Don't know what to make of that. Nope. That's all I got. Faster beers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right, Expecial, though. All right, see how Expecial deals with this gank, because this is actually the first true test. If he fails here, I feel like he can't give Dyrus any more flat. All right, so this is the point in his mind when he's thinking, wait, I usually have an AD carry to pawn this off on, but it's uh, me now. It's only me. He gets the flash. Do the havoc. No. Oh, he turned around in a spinning slash. Great job by MBS. The follow-up there on the rebound. They're able to get another kill for themselves. 600 gold only, but they're really making the junglers work for this. At least Ellen here, because he's been in every lane so far trying to make it happen for his team. Odd One's doing all the counter jungling, 46 to 21 in CS. And out, he has hit level 6 here too. Odd One yeah. does have his ultimate ready, so he's going to go help out Dyrus and Reggie down bottom. Get that team of fed. Oh! Right through the turret to the backside. Deadly Brother tries to get out, but it's going to be all about its viral. Oh, he gets out of this. They get the flash play once again. Horse play coming in. Reggie will take what? the turret. Oh, what? well. And he'll die for it. All right, so the Teemo suit does not give you any more defense. It just looks cool. You can't tank turrets like that. Turtle coming up. The speed steroid. That was a pretty good shockwave. Dyrus has been missing all his hooks, but he always follows up with the flash the flay. Fla the harder one. You flash flay. Whatever. I don't want to throw the hook. I'll wait five minutes and flash flay again. That's what he's saying. So we may see... No. Turtle goes back. We won't see the first turret going down here. Odd one clearing out mid lane, so everybody's just regrouping. I don't think they've definitively figured out what they want to do yet, which is why they're not going anywhere. They said, yeah, we got a few kills, but I don't think we have enough ground to really make that move. And TSM's been the one to control objectives. They don't really have the team to do that, but neither do both teams. You don't have the Renekton. You don't have a Nasus. So it's really just both of these teams feeling each other out for the next move. I, uh, I saw TSM's game plan before this match, and it was really just a, a, page, a page printed out with First Blood Teemo, and that and then it was dot, dot, dot. Profit. Those are those were mushrooms. That, the they map. they got the first blood on Timo. That was really all that they thought through. <laughs> what happens during that mid game part? Oh yeah, we're gonna get there again. We'll see. Pretty substantial lead here coming from uh, Gaming Gear too. This is probably the best start that they've had to any of their games here at Worlds. Alanir sneaking in down to this bottom lane. He's. Yeah, they got the, all the... Oh, he throws out the hook. See, it wasn't a hey, flash flay. It would have been guaranteed flash flay. Yeah. But the hook goes out. That means with the hook down, the pressure is a little bit off. Reginald taking a phosphorus bomb right to the nose there. And it looks like this will be a quite a formidable gank. He's seven, level seven Jarvan to the six and five here. Even in the mid, too. Oh, and yes, he's getting his gank on. What? Oh, he got it. He actually hit it as soon as the auto attack went out. Tries to get the dueling down, but it cannot happen. The blue buff there on Mazarin has him pick up the kill. They could go hard on Reggie here. There's the aggro. He jumps in with the hook. He says, you want me? You got me. Going in is the odd one from the backside. Getting that horse play in there. And Spyro takes another turret shot. That's only going to help to solidify the kill. Odd one coming up big on CS. Now two kills for himself. They may just go for Deadly Brother. He's going to have the red buff as soon as he gets that. It's all said and done. Odd one, one more turret shot. Does get out. And he's going to recall in the Fnatic push. Right in the... Oh, level 8 to level 8. The ultimate's still there. Jinnamir can throw down that rage. Special. No, he turns it around. He gets enough distance without the spinning, spinning slash to be up. You got to keep the consonants it, in the right place. It was a little bit early on that Ignite there from Expecial. Kind of alerted him. Said, I want to kill you. 6 to 4 is Expecial. We've talked about this before. That turret will go down slowly. Vladimir keeps throwing things at it. 15,600 to 14,600. So with everything that has happened slowly, but surely around the map, it is only 1,000 gold, which always can come back from right now. The one turret in favor of gaming gear is going to be that mid turret. So they do open up a little bit of access to the buffs in that dragon if they really want to start pressuring more with deep wards. teemo has got his mushrooms, so he can uh, spam those around the dragon pit. And TSM... 
They've already passed up their eight-minute dragon that all the analysts keep talking about there. Yep. So well known for us. Uh, you can see they're deviating from their normal path here. Not -uh. on. It's just a little bit. Uh, so again, odd one is <laughs> Eleanor's blue buff. He has been there every single time so far. And if you actually, I was going to say, odd one's a little too high in CS, but there are 79s and 99s on the board. I was going to say he's almost maxed out with his lanes right now. But Wild Turtle does have him at 84. Mazarin looking to roam a little bit here, but the ping's going down. Odd one is being super patient. I'm, he gets a cookie for this one. Meanwhile, down bottom here, Deadly Brother has gone with the oh Vamp dear. Scepter, so he'll, Trinity Force will be delayed, and Odd One comes in hot! Going on to Odd One, comes in again, and Spiro, it's Viral rather, tries to flash out, but he gets the oh. great pushback! The double knockback here, Elanir doing what he can! This is gonna make it a 2v1, 3v2 coming in, if they can make it! See what they can do to this, Elanir taking damage onto Dyrus now! Reginald already pieced out of this fight. <laughs> They're still going. That was another beautiful flash play there from Dyrus. Got two with this one. They ended up trading kills in the end, though. So, again, Gaming Gear really starting to pull away with this one. Hey, man, if you five minutes, a kill every five minutes is a pretty fast pace. To wait for that flash play to come up every time has been an advantage, and it has worked out for them. They're trying to grab up Dragon here, thwart a little bit of what Team Solo Mid has been doing around the map, and continue their gold lead, pressuring a, a 900 more gold up. And they move and make way off of that. The rewards are still going down good for both teams. It's really once we get these team fights in here to see how these compositions really work. Because you got guys that want to keep them in the center with Elunir's Cataclysm. But then you got Exploding Cask. It's going to blow you out right to the outside of the ultimate and its farthest edges with Inspiro trying to crescendo you. So that's coming out of gaming gear. Dyrus, we've seen the flash flays. Odd One has been going in from Nocturne length ganks and still making that happen here. We'll see. Both of these teams pressing themselves to the limit. Well, uh, Odd One's gone with those Swifty boots, so he's going full speed right now. Wild Turtle gets hit. Huzzah! Right into the wall, but he throws down the Shockwave. I don't think it's going to be enough. The one, two, and the belly slam to the backside is going to be enough to take down Turtle. Mazarin's Gragas is not to be trifled with. He is a legitimate hardcore Gragas player, and Turtle right now is feeling the pain. Uh-oh. Reginald putting on the move. Nope. Getting the quick feet to get out of that one. So with the turret down, they really haven't tried to activate too much. They did go for the dragon after good pressure in the bottom lane. Special in NBS here on top on an island. I don't think they're going to see too much of anybody. Hook there by Dyrus. Pulls himself in, but he looks to be throwing himself in the fire. Now Odd One is able to act on it. Now Reginald's able to act. Mazarin says, peace out, goodbye. And he's going to get help to get out from Inspire. Reggie coming and doing his part as well. Another assist for Teemo. Special really has done his part up in the top lane. One more hit on that turret. You think Special had an easier time because he's not Dyrus? Mm, <laughs> that may have been a large factor. He did end up dying to the first gank that went there, though. That's true. That is true. They kept the eyes on the top lane. We'll see if leaving Special alone comes back to hurt them. That turret in the top lane goes down, so they answer the structures at 1-1 one to one now. 15 minutes into the game, NBS forced to stay in the top lane, but they may try to activate something once again. Looks like he's going to try to sneak into this bush. Mazarin getting the pings on going up as well. They know where that Gragas is. Odd one seeking him out. You've entered the General's jungle. Now you're going to exit it. That's fine. So we have the next dragon coming up within at least three or four minutes. We did just see that go down in control. And the bottom side of the map is gaming gears, which isn't really normal for TSM in the early game. Like we say, they grab that objective, which means they're going to probably have the first turret that went down, which they haven't. They did grab one for themselves in the top lane, but again, answered in the bottom lane now. Gaming gear really adapting to everything that TSM has tried to do, not letting themselves be thrown off by the early first blood. Turtle gets hit back, but like oh, I said, it missed. pushes them away. They want to focus their power into one spot, but the time spent there was Lantern. looking to where they were going. Alan, you're not end of the fight. Dyrus comes in, the crescendo goes out. It is not going to dance the odd one as he gallops himself to a double kill, now going on to Inspiro. Always the focus here. You can see the look on his face. He is not happy about this right now. He is going to try to run. It is hard to run in a dress, and he is going to go down. Oh, Reggie can't even get that one, though. Dyrus had to commit. 
to supporting the rest of TSM, though, so this allows NBS to answer with this top turret. Triforce coming out now. Deadly Brother, he gets a little bit of burst into his uh, uh, kit there. We see the Archangel as well as the Sork Boots coming out. So the long game, as we saw before from Turtle and team, the tier being stacked up. Look around the map, we do see the Lizard item going on to the Odd One. Looking for more of that burn with his red buff. But he's also looking to mitigate. He's got the Negatron and the Wardens as well, so he can consistently make these dives without having to worry. Yeah, the heal from Hecarim, extremely strong, so giving him a lot more effective health when he stacks those resistances. Yep. NBS, though, he still could have fought the Odd One, one versus one Didn't want to turn around because he had no vision. Didn't know if there was a Teemo going to pop out behind him. Just jumps over the wall. He's, he's fighting invisible monsters right now. He got it. There it is. It was hiding behind the small one. That's all. All the golems look alike? What are you saying, Riv? Yeah. Actually... <laughs> it's... Oh, I was going to say something, but it wasn't going to be funny. 9 to 9, 17 and a half minutes. 2,000 gold for gaming gear. They've held quite a lead onto this one, and kind of TSM on slow and steady. They're not... It doesn't seem like they're too worried about it, but they're also not falling too far behind. They're like they have a plan at some point in the game. Maybe to lead them into a minefield of mushroom satellites. Maybe... A dragon fight? A baron dance? Dragon fight, that would be in another minute. So, so Reggie's, Reggie's going to have to get some mana and lay his minefield before that happens, or else they really will not have an advantage. Well, he's going back to get the mana, but the minefield won't be there for a while. We'll see what they can do. This is, yeah, Gaming Gear having the timer on dragon, saying, let's get these lanes pushed a little bit more, figure out where they are, and do some damage. Looks like they're going to try to contest here. The pink ward is going to give them a good upper hand. It gets Inspiro. Oh, does he connect? No, Dyrus does not choose to pull take the chain. The lantern. But he does take the lantern to safety. Very nicely done. They still have that top laner jungler synergy, even though Dyrus is now on threat. Yeah. See if they can get the... Oh, they're going to get pinched in here, but I don't think GG is going to have the full side swipe. Yep, yeah, TSM is going to make their way out. They're going to say, Ten seconds you, take, on that drag. you take ours, we take yours. The blue buff will be huge for Turtle to have during a dragon fight. Oriana being able to duel and provide safety for your team with that blue buff on is huge. There's so much vision they for GG right now. So Dyrus is on the wrong side of the map. Mm. If he had five wards, he would have known where to go. He flashes out of this one. He's all right. He does actually have that many wards, so he did know where to go. He's also got a long sword, so he's got... <laughs> Some extra attack damage. That extra 10 damage could be the difference here. We'll see. If somebody lives with 5 HP, then he needs another longsword. 3 to 1 in turrets here as we have gaming gear really putting the pressure on. The three outer turrets have gone down, and overall, that just opens up the first half of your this jungle. This is definitely go time here. Reginald takes a barrel to the face. He's going to start chasing off on the right side, but Alanir says, no way. Peel duty coming in. Reginald inside Cataclysm. Mazarin with a body slam takedown. MBS on a wild turtle. They will still turn this fight. A very nice box going down by Reginald, or Reginald by Dyrus that stops the team, but TSM was almost inside and on the other side of that box. Oh, it's the last hole. Is the dragon? Wait. Well, oh, on the chase. Who tied their Nikes tighter? Uh oh. No, don't walk into it. Oh. Mazarin pulls up the ace. Gaming Gear really was stranglehold. Now the extra dragon. That's gonna. That's gonna pretty much do it here for TSM. Mazarin pushing down mid. He should be able to get some good damage. No, timers are way too low still. 10 is 12s on the map. We do have Mazarin at 14, NBS at 13. That gives them a two level and one level advantage on two of the members on their team. Great job by Inspiro taking down that dragon with the help of Deadly Brother as TSM tries to regroup. See what they're formulating. Moby Boots going on to Dyrus so he can make more flash play plays. Looks like we will have somewhat of the Hextech Gunblade as well as possibly Azonia's coming out on the side of a special for his Vladimir, but Reginald is actually gone for Teemo, Blade of the Ruined King. It's just quite interesting. But then again, Teemo's close because you can blind, so... Yeah, that's a good item completed for him, but meanwhile, NBS has a Blade of the Ruined King plus his static shift, so that is Ooh. the split-pushing Trindomir combo, and he's just going to be a monster right now, so it's going to get ugly from this point on for the TSM fans. 
And odd one, odd one is definitely taken to the jungle this game. 115 farm, 5, 1, and 4, which is still pretty good for the amount of CS he's actually gotten because it's not lane taxing. He's been in the jungle, and then it's almost like I took a, I took a jungle camp of the enemy team. Now I must gank. It's like he's, his camps are the kills that other teams act off of to take turrets. So he's definitely making moves this game for TSM. But a 5,000 gold lead with all that pressure from odd one is still in the hands of gaming gear. They found a way to kind of work their way into the woodwork here. And with Gaming Gear grouping up mid, TSM are looking to force that 4 vs 5 situation. All that Gaming Gear have to do is keep their distance, wait for the split push to occur. Reginald back in the bottom lane, which means actually that's going to be Deadly Brother called down. The top lane being pushed by NBS and way more of a threat here than we have Reginald going onto the turret. They should be able to drop that. We'll see if they get a 1v1, but that's what I'm talking about. NBS just going wreaking havoc right now. That blade in his favor. He's going to be able to get through this one. The Hemo play is going to hit him up. He'll throw on the ultimate. The last hit goes down. And Alunir tries to get in for the standard assist, but he wasn't there in time. All right, Gaming Gear going to push all three lanes now because they won all three lanes. NBS has no ult. Oh, Adwan taking good advantage of that. Looks like he also wants a refresh on that red buff, but he changes his mind. He gets cat oh, hit up on. Actually, that was a flag and drag I saw on the minimap. Looks like Man Shockwave down. Mazarin gets hit up and the crescendo goes back. A great bounce out by the exploding cast. Mazarin somehow makes it out alive on the ball movement. Oh, Dyrus gets the minion. It's a little bit of gold, but not what he wanted. Misses that play because he didn't flash. Mazarin picks up the kill from across the side. Alunir throws himself into the fire. Turtle with red buff is still going to hurt pretty good with those auto attacks stacking up on Orianna's passive. But it's not going to be the ball movement. It's not as good as a duel. And he may actually go down here as Mazarin getting himself healthy. Turtle is pretty comfortable on Orianna with no mana. Yeah. Returning to his ADK roots with that red buff. <laughs> but meanwhile, down bottom lane, Deadly Brother takes another turret. And the gold oh, lead extends. Oh, bad news bears. Nope. Oh, maybe not. Like special. Reading this out. Playing support. He's checking the minimap. He's saying, actually, Turtle, I think you're in danger. I'm going to help. Turtle backs. Safety has been secured. 24 minutes in here, it's 17 to 12. Safety is secured for them, but this game is not yet. Gaming Gear is on a tear right now, and a 6.5 thousand gold lead, three turrets in their favor, which means they've hit a second tier turret on the map. This is just getting worse and worse for TSM. Yeah, this game's pretty well handled by Gaming Gear. Uh, they kept cool under pressure, even with the first blood from Teemo. The game after this, with the OMG versus SKT1, I'm already wondering, you know, what kind of uh, champions they're going to pick, if they're going to stay serious or not, because that's actually one of the most looked forward to matchups. Yep. First round was won by OMG, and we'll have to see. I think SKT1 will probably be wanting to take that one back and even it up, but OMG have already shown that they can perform no matter what champions they choose. Oh, Reggie getting very close there, but he does have a few mushrooms around to keep him safe for a good escape. Everybody on TSM seems to be backing right now. We'll see what they put in their inventories. No home guards yet. They aren't strung out that far, but they really need to start saving things here and there. And multitask, but they do need to get these lanes pushed. They have to figure out a way to get back in it. Being down 6,000 gold and Vladimir being your split pusher is stopped over and over by Trindamir. Dyrus. Laughing his butt off over here on Thresh. <laughs> One of the scarier laughs, though. Could be confused with his taunt. We still like all, all the other sounds from Korea. Like the Lissandra, the screams. Those ones are always those are pretty amusing. Reggie back in the bottom lane. And we have to consider that Reginald isn't going to provide a whole lot for his team. So this is why we got the Teemo split pushing. Trying to be a menace, a menace with his mushrooms. But is it going to be enough? Move speed is not going to get him up here in time. Baron at 25 minutes could be in the hands of Gaming Gear, and it looks like there's no contest from TSM. The chat's going out from Inspire. They're saying, I think we should push the Nexus after this. That's generally the, the game plan for League of Legends. They got the Baron buff, so giant, giant advantage secured. Reggie is not giving up on this bottom turret, though. Whoa! A 26-minute endeavor finally pays off. The return on investment may not be there, but it's all about that it happened. 44 to 37,000. 
Oh, Special getting hit up here by Alunir. He is going to have Trindamir just on the other side. Will they decide to go for the Valkyrie over the wall? No, he, he, he did make it in. Kind of squeezed himself into the Cataclysm there. Corky teetering on the side of the rock. Special, oh. very nice Thresh Lantern. Dyrus getting him to safety there. Dyrus says, that's how you do it, Special. Maybe Dyrus is the one with the upper hand in this switch, actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Oh, he gets Mazarin. That, that, I was going to say, that'd be scary. That'd be your death sentence if you hooked onto that one, going out into the middle of a five-man brawl by himself. He does have the alt up. He does have flash up, so he will get the flay. We'll have to see if they can perform that. As long as everybody groups up around Gragas here, they can't do much. NBS can continue split pushing because we've already seen him solo a special. Nobody really can go answer that, and the rest of Gaming Gear can just wait for Mazarin to land one of those ultis. Knock some unsuspecting member of TSM to the rest of the team. Ooh. Dyer is feeling some good pain there. NBS being a menace in this top lane. And it's really just GG feeling out where TSM is. Once they get the one pick that they need, they're going to be going in. Deadly Brother to do quite a bit of damage here. Expect that. Onto the turret, brings it down to half health. Pretty good siege protection here from TSM, but it's only a matter of time. The turrets are taking more damage than they would like per push. The mid one's fairly healthy, though. Yep. It's only got a couple of knocks on it. Rest of the team closing in, though. Alanir joins the fight. So this is going to be even worse now. If they can't take down one and then the other, they're going to have both. So once they take down that one, they easily win the fight and walk to the other one. It's going to take them no time as they are now prepping both of those inhibitors to be taken down for a pretty much unstoppable push that they would have. If this fight is won, they go out under Reginald. A little bit of uh, hate there coming out. Wild Turtle goes down, though. The global taunt from Teemo, too much. Wild Turtle with the sort of half smile there. That's that's like the <laughs> smallest smile I've ever seen on Wild Turtle's face. I don't know if TSM are having as much fun as they thought they would with this mix-up. This is going to be big on the top lane. There it is, the one, the two to the inhibitor turrets. They easily prep them for the kills. 29 minutes in, NBS going on hard to special. He gets the choke down, but they can't continue. And that damage from Mazarin so big right now that TSM is forced to take it and keep going back to the fountain. Reggie's still smiling, but that's because he got to play Teemo. <laughs> Jokes on you guys. So only three turrets left on the map here for Team Solo Mid. An 11,000 gold lead, hefty, you know, in the hands of Gaming Gear, which means the 11,000 gold is definitely a few core finished items within a few members. It is going to be an impact when these fights start to come out. We have the Rabadons and Seraph which is good on Turtle, but we have to remember these guys are still down a level. It's why these fights aren't being impacted so much, and it's why Gaming Gear is slow and steadily winning the race. Yeah, Wild Turtle is doing his part up there, level 17 at least. But we just saw how little that mattered when Mazarin was able to land his combo. First and down, 100%. Wild Turtle's gone. Glass Cannon Oriana here. All right, we'll see what they can put up. Red buff being grabbed up. That can't be too much more. Once you're grabbing the buffs at this point, you're not farming. You're ready for that last pressure, ready for the last goal. You can see the Aegis ring right there under the feet of Jarvan. He has set himself up with a locket finished up off of the Iron Solari there. The last whisper coming out in the hands of NBS, which means he is just going to be cutting through people right now. And the only one standing in front of him is going to be the odd one. So these guys looking pretty good to win this 18 to 12. Could be a final push here, Kobe. It better be. Uh, <laughs> Gaming Gear, they've got two inhibitors down already, and they've got plenty this is that take control moment. of power to back this one up. They're looking for their first win at here at Worlds. It's going to be their last game, and they're going to finish it out strong. I'm not going to lie. TSM still has the ultimates that would make you disengage. You'd have to get out of there. The Hemo Plague AoE, the Command Shockwave AoE, the damage oh, they you got can Mazarin. do off a of Hackerum Ultimate, the Spirit of the Dread going as well, trying to get that damage as well as heal himself, and things like that could stop the push. Very good job there by TSM, taking the initiative, but with that down, I like two this. very, very important ultimates down. They can't pull that twice. 
Gaming Gear showing they know they're ahead. This, a lot of teams hesitate at this point. Everlast asking Alanir, after losing one out. member. Closes the Cataclysm finally. Almost couldn't get that down. MBS throws himself in. A three-man crescendo. The knock-up after. The crowd control follow-up is so consecutive. TSM finally moves after a good three seconds. And this is what I'm talking about. That disengage. The AOE one after the other. The ability to stop the final push. TSM come back. Starting right now. 31 minutes in. Oh Able dear. to get a few kills for themselves. No more outer tur no more inhibitor turrets left for them to defend with. So it's gonna have to be all them catching gaming gear off guard. And I don't think gaming gear are gonna let this one slip away. They see this win in their sights, and they're finally gonna take it. Don't jinx them. Don't jinx them, Kobe. 56 to 46, they're keeping the gold lead, which means they're not really giving up too much. Yeah, they are, they're losing a few on each pressure, but they're always gain, gaining a turret. They're gaining damage on those inhibitors, and they're making sure that they're giving TSM a hard time. It's not like TSM can walk out of the base after this. It's all cleanup mode for them right now. They got their janitor buckets out. They're trying to mop up base. Gaming Gear have that Baron timer down. So they're just gonna wait up there, instantly take it, and then push in for the win. They haven't, they haven't missed a step here, though. The next step looks like it is going to be Baron once more. And Oracles keeps him clean. They time this one out. So this definitely going to make it a little harder, especially with the Mikhail's Crucible coming in on Inspiro. He's finished up his items. Everybody's pretty much not max, but where they could be for this game. It's gone definitely down the right path for gaming gear here. So coming out of this with the Baron, we should see a final push but TSM I'm not gonna give up so easily you can see Reggie smiling he's like yeah I'm clearing this it's, wave it's you're not pushing bottom he right there he was just remembering hey guys remember that time where I got first blood with Timo down bottom he was reminiscing and then everybody says thanks and then we lost odd one up to the front every time he makes a step he has been in the fight so I don't even expect him to kind of hesitate here but he did you can see level 16 17 there a lot of 18s on that side of NBS. Bit of pressure onto the inhibitor. The focus really can't be anywhere yet. It's gonna be the odd one. It's gonna be special. It's gonna be the odd one. They're trying to micro each other back and forth. Put the there fear into gaming gear. Back onto its spiral. They try to lock down the crescendo, but he gets it out. It's special takes just about his full HP bar in an exploding cast. One after the other. TSM begins to fall in spiral. The only one here for gaming gear. And they look to clean up the base with 40 seconds in the death chambers. All right, Gaming Gear closing in on their first win of Worlds. Locking it down. The Nexus turrets there. Dyrus not flashing for the last flay. The flash was down. So are the Nexus turrets. Gaming Gear picking up the W in this last matchup versus Team Solo Mid in the group stage. <laughs> Ended too fast for Mazarin. He wanted that kill there. TSM gave their fans a game. These guys came out. They played really well. They played their heart out. And they had fun. Really counts. Great game. They gave their fans a game. They gave their fans a game. Sure words never spoken. We said on social media, they were joking it up. Not to say this game was a joke from them. But they were having fun. They knew they came into Worlds. Both teams fought very hard. Worlds showed that there is just so much power that has not been seen around the world. And I think China has shown that here as well. I mean, OMG kind of put a stamp on their strength, so we're going to have to see what Royal can bring up. Yeah, we'll look forward to our OMG going to finish this whole group stage undefeated. The next game is the last game of the group stages. SKT1 versus OMG is a giant matchup. A lot of people have been saying those are the two best teams that are even here at Worlds. It's, it's going to be different. We've definitely uh, keep saying it. It's a mid lane centric kind of tournament coming into Worlds here with what's been going on. Faker, Cool, you know, even Reginald, Man Cloud, everybody around. They're pretty big, so we'll have to see what these teams have for each other. But right now, we're going to send it over to our five man analytical team for an autopsy on TSM's Team Comp. Thank you very much, Riv. And I'll sum it up for you in one word Timo. <laughs> hey, that's not fair. Timo did what he could, he got first blood. 
worth it. It was totally, totally yes, it worth was. it. Yes, it was. Uh, the one thing that I think I want to uh, just quickly chat to you guys about that I think is a little more resounding, the idea of swapping roles, of mm -hmm. having top lane play support, <laughs> etc. Krepa, for example, is the best in Nivea in all of the European LCS, 100%, undefeated record, better than Froggen. Represent. I mean, Froggen went, what, 0-3 in the summer split? But in all seriousness, why do we not see players swapping roles more often? Because this can happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that yeah. was brutal. That, that, that was just I brutal. Come on. They set up. They set up for a, a less serious game. Okay, they didn't win. Uh, they knew there was one of the possibilities. Uh, they could have done it. I think role swapping is fine if both players master all the champions. I think some people in TSM just wanted to play certain things, and you end up always with somebody getting forced in a role that they weren't as comfortable with. The game I played back in the day when Froggen swapped me, I wasn't comfortable. I just had to shout like, don't touch my farm, get away, <laughs> get away. So yeah. And kept hoping the camera wasn't on you for your stunts. Oh my God, my CS as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's worth pointing out as well that uh, I had predicted Gaming Gear to be the dark horse of this group and they did pull a win, so. Hindsight's uh, a beautiful ironic, thing. <laughs> ironic that they, the dark horse team picks up a victory against Hecarim. In oh. their last game. No. Just saying. Although, if, if it was your dark horse, where was your prediction for them to win? Uh, I pull a double lift here. Yeah, uh, good shit. <laughs> or, <wait. laughs> good job, Freak. Oh, it, it, in it's late. It's late. It's in late. retrospect, I should have had more faith in them. But, oh well. I mean, when you have Teemo, you can't vote against Teemo. <laughs> All right, double lift. We're putting a muscle on you now. Well, I failed that, you guys. <laughs> let's talk, let's talk a little bit soon. Let's, let's step back and, and, and talk about what just happened now. Kobe mentioned the fact that the next game is going to be the last game of groups. It is OMG versus SKT. This is more bragging rights than anything else. And of course, what we're going to be doing after that game is the quarterfinal draws. For the viewers that might be wanting the format, we're going to invite the captains of all of the teams that got buys individually onto stage. They're going to make a draw for where in the bracket they will be finding themselves in the top half of the bracket, bottom half of the bracket, and they will draw who their opponents will be. So we will be determining those quarterfinal matchups. And just to give everybody a, a rundown of the teams in the, the, the group, Fnatic, Gambit, Cloud9, Najin Shield, SK Telecom, T1, Royal, OMG, as well as the Gamma Bears. Yep. So let's talk about these, these teams. What... For the teams that have a buy, what sort of advantage do they have having watched 40 group games and you know, being able to prepare? Talk to me a little bit about that. They've definitely got a better handle on the teams. These guys have had to fight for their lives specifically in these matches. We looked at, we'll take Group A for example. TSM put very close games against OMG and SKT1. Those teams had to play their hardest to make sure they got out of group. Same for Group B. You saw how hard Gambit and Fnatic had to fight for their lives. Whereas for teams like Sword or teams like Royal Club, while they've been playing in the regular leagues here, they've had a little bit more time to prepare in darkness and have a couple more strategies up their sleeves. Yeah, the biggest advantage of having watched 40 games is having watched 40 games. The biggest uh, disadvantage is that you're coming in cold, you have no tournament experience, you haven't made a single mistake on this stage yet, you haven't been influenced, you haven't yet had to bounce back. In scrims it's always easy, if you have a bad early game you just restart or you play another game. Yeah, it's also for the, the teams that were waiting for the buy into the quarterfinals, you have to consider too that with no other tournaments pretty much happening right now, they may not have the ideal number of scrim partners at the moment because a lot of teams may be taking breaks or they've been scrimming here at Worlds against the other Worlds teams. So it's not just that you're coming in cold in terms of competition. You may also be coming in a little colder than you may have liked in terms of practice. Yeah, the teams that are playing uh, here right now have a distinct advantage because not only have they been practicing, but just being used to your peripherals and being used to the stage is so important. If you come in and it's your very first game on the world stage, you're not going to be nearly as comfortable just in your setup, like maybe your chair is in the right height or something like that, and it, it can really throw off your game. At the same time, with the, the randomness of the, this format, the way the, the groups are drawn in the, in the quarterfinals, you have no idea who you're playing against, so you'll have to prepare for four possible teams, which is really hard and it will not give you that distinct advantage as if you're in a normal format where you know who you're going to meet the next round. I'm really happy that you actually highlight that and yeah. I think Thank part you. of the reason we're doing the, the random draw is to ensure that these teams that have the extra time aren't sitting and seriously anti-stratting their opponents and you know really spending more hours on defeating one matchup than actually planning or playing or, or, or working on their own game. I've got a question I want to pose to the two guys who've actually played on stages like this. Um, talk to me about as a team, you've been practicing in the dark, you, you've got your compositions, you've got your thoughts about teams in mind. You've now watched teams like Fnatic pulling out double assassin comms, pulling Zach top lane, Yorick top lane, you've seen Lovelin and all of his ganks. Um, 
How much of an impact does this have on your picks and bands? I know it gives you more information to work with, but do you now start to discount your previous research or is this just now a bigger playbook that now all of a sudden, instead of like 27 champs that you think about, you know about, now it's up to like 40 because, oh my God, we didn't see these things. It definitely depends on how drastically your initial research and the new information you got at Worlds is, is different. So like, for example, if you did research on Fnatic and they pulled out something crazy here, you would just instantly ban that thing and then just know that they would revert back to the thing that they've been practicing, you know, m weeks ago. So if you see something new, it gives you a distinct advantage because you can just be like, I'm going to ban that and I know exactly what they're going to play. They're going to go back to their comfort picks. Also depends on what kind of team you are. Some teams have this very distinct style that they just will always play and they will force enemies to adapt to them. Uh, Gambit is one of those teams that comes to mind. They don't really care who they play. They will just try and play their own game all the time. Same with Fnatic. They have this weird little play style that nobody actually can describe. On the other hand, you have teams that are really reactive and like to predict what enemies are going to do. And for those teams, it's really nice to see what, what the trends have been throughout these group stages. Yeah, I want to echo Dublift a bit here because as we've seen from, for example, Ozone, who failed to really adapt during this tournament and got kicked out, none of these teams have really changed their play styles by any major measure with the new patches. So, okay, you've seen them in NLB, you've seen them in LPL and whatnot. These teams are all still going to play the same as they did a month and a half ago, for the most part. Some new picks come in, of course, Corky's a new guy, okay, whatever. But for the most part, all that old research holds up. And as you said, double lift, if they have something completely new, okay, maybe you ban it out or maybe you learned how to beat it in time. Well, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how these teams do that and, and even more excited about this draw. Guys, we need to move on for our very last group stage game and it's time for everyone on the desk here to pick the final match winners or at least who they think is going to be the winner. It's going to be SK Telecom T1 versus OMG. And remember, OMG beat SKT the last time these two teams met. So Monty, talk to me. Who's your prediction? I'm going to take SK Telecom. I think that they're going to take this match very seriously. I don't think they're going to show anything too unique, but we saw that methodical play coming in against Gaming Gear earlier today, and I know they want revenge, of course. You know, it was a little bit of egg on their face to lose to OMG the first time. They're going to want to head into group strong, and OMG, they've shown, maybe they've loosened up, relaxed their style a little bit here in the last few games, so. Double lift, what's your prediction? Uh, I'm with SKT. I'm with Mani on this one, because... I feel like SKT only really lost the initial match against OMG because th they weren't used to that kind of strategy that OMG was pulling. And now that they've had time to review it, their mid-game, I think, is just this much better than OMG's, and they're going to pull it out. Uh, I'll have to agree with these uh, great analysts. Uh, I think SKT1 is going to be the favorite going into this game, especially because they, they, they struggled in their early game, which have gradually improved, not to a point where it's perfect, but they, their coach have, may, have, may have exposed the weaknesses in their 3v1 meta game early, and hopefully they can bring that out. I think Faker's going to be really on fire. He will want to prove that he's the best mid laner in the world. Uh, SKT seems to be, I think, is going to be more hungry than OMG, who will m probably be hiding a little more of the strategies. That's what I guess, but then again, I've been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I actually go uh, the opposite way of you three. I still think OMG is going to take it and ace the group. Uh, partially on the pride grounds, going 8-0 is a really cool thing to have, be the only undefeated team in groups. I think just in general, they will, they will come out hard enough and are a better enough team at this point that if they have you know, the sort of the same level of trying, which I think will happen here, OMG will just come out ahead by being a stronger team. Well, that's going to... Give it for the predictions. I think that uh, OMG have already aced the group. They're working on their Okta kill, if that's even a thing. Yeah. We're going to take a breather, guys, but when we return, Faker and SK Telecom take on Cool and OMG. Plus, Gaming Gear's Mazarin will join us to talk about securing their very first win of Worlds. Don't touch that mouse. The Season 3 World Championship live from Los Angeles. We'll be right back. <laughs>